today we are going to start working. But before we can work on anything, we need a, I'm gonna teach you the safety things you will need to keep your eyes and your ears protected from using um, electric tools like the saw and the drill. So first thing you will need, if you are using a drill, you might want safety glasses, or in this case, eyes. But if you're working with a saw and you're hearing loud noises, that can cause your ears to be weird. You want ear protection, your ears. And they work like this. Now let's get to work. All right, everyone. Today we're gonna build the EAA workbench. I chose this workbench because it is the most capable for building a Sonics, my aircraft I am going to build. These supplies can build two EAA workbenches. And if you want to see this script for yourself, you can click on the link below. And you don't have to do this, but you can if you want. You can put levelers on the bottom, the very bottom of your workbench, way down here. To level out your workbench, that way it's not all wobbly. And I have already cut all the pieces of wood I need to build my second workbench. I previously have built my practice workbench to help me build my official workbench to show you how to build a workbench. So the reason you want, I want two workbenches is so I can put them together to make one bigger workbench. That way I don't have to go from here all the way to over here to get something, fix it up, and then go all the way over here to get more items. So, we can put them together. So we can easily put them together by knowing the factory edge, or the factory square, and the shop edge, or the shop square. The factory edge creates a perfect 90 degree angle. But the shop edge, or shop square, doesn't. It's almost there, but it's not quite. And if you want to be sure where the shop angle and the uh, factory angle are, take a red marker, scribble it on the side like that, then take a blue marker and scribble it on the other side. Then you can easily line them up. Each way doesn't matter. You can line them up like this or line them up like this. So, I have the wood for my legs. These pieces of wood are going to be glued and screwed onto these bottom pieces of wood for the legs of my workbench. But, I need to align them to make sure they are the same length. But I don't know how. Actually, I do. I'm going to use a jig. A jig helps me or helps you align something or put it in the same place every single time the correct way. And exactly the same. So what? I'm going to use two spare pieces of wood. Well, three. I'm going to align this first one up right here. Then I'm going to grab my second one and align it up here to hold the brick in place. Then I'm going to take this and tap them all gently until they hit the brick they are aligned with. Do the same back here on 
the line in all the same length. Thanks to the jig. So the wood pieces I have here are the wood pieces to make my legs for the workbench. And what you're going to need is wood glue that you bought at Lowe's. Well, I bought it at Lowe's. And you, what the wood glue does is it strengthens up the legs so they stay together very well. But you're also not just going to wood glue it, you're also going to screw it with screws. And um, this is my handy helper, Dad, because I'm not that great with wood glue and the drill just yet, so I'm going to have him do this. All right, so we're going to do this step by step. I'm going to do mm -hmm. this first one, and then you're going to do the second one. Okay. I will start the screws on this one, and you'll get to practice on this piece. So we're going to do mm -hmm. the wood glue first. We're going to take our extra piece and set it off to the side, and we're going to put our glue down on the foundation. We're going to take and pop the top on the glue lid. Just lift up on it like that, mm -hmm. and that's clean. So we can just take and put our S shape of glue. But you're gonna do it repeatedly, so it will look more like a squiggle. Yeah, it looks like a squiggle. We get good coverage, and we always close our glue tip back up when mm -hmm. we're done. Okay, now we're gonna take our piece that we're gonna put the screws in, mm -hmm. we're gonna set it back down against our jig, and we're going to make sure our jig is still square. I'm going to tap everything into place so that everything is exactly the same way, which is why we're using our jig, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. To so keep it all the same every time. So I'm going to start these first two screws, okay. and then I'm going to drive them all the way in, and then I'll start the next two screws for you. I'm going to put two up here and two down here. So the first screw I'm going to put in. Oh wait, what am I forgetting? You're forgetting your safety goggles. Yeah, I always wear eye or protection. Or your eyes. Whenever we're using the power tools. So I put my safety glasses on. I'm going to hold the workpiece in place so it doesn't move. I'm going to start this screw. Drive it nice and clean straight through. Notice, as I started, I was holding the screw. But now that I'm driving it, I'm going to hold the top of the drill. Uh -huh. I'm going to keep my arm at a nice straight angle so I can control the drill as I drive it in. And it's a slow push so it doesn't strip the screw head on the screw bit. I'm going to come to the other side. I'm going to do the exact same thing so it locks the piece in place. So that way it won't move on you when you're doing your work. Yay! Again, I'm going to start it holding onto the top of the screw where it's not sharp. Let the screw bite into the wood. Bit nice and clean. I'm going to hold the top of the drill. I'm going to do a nice, clean, controlled push straight in until it's done. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'll start these next two for you to do. Mm -hmm. Started. And that one started. All right, climb up on top of the step ladder. Control the drill. Nice and slow. It starts to strip like that, just stop. One more little squeeze. Hold the drill. Nope. Hold the drill when you do that. One more little squeeze. Okay. Okay, I'll go to the next one. down. There you go. Good job. All right. Now that we're done with that one, we'll go to our next piece. And we're going to keep it in place so we can make sure our jig stays true. We're going to pull this piece out. And this time, you get to do the glue. Okay, what do we do when we're done? 
We'll close our blue tip up. This. We'll set that off to the side. What's the next step? We put it down in place and line it up with our jig. Yep, so everything's good to go in the place. So we'll set our then screws Then you start up. the screws. Two on the top, two on the bottom. There you go. Ready to drive him home. Good job. All right. Okay, so now that we've got the first two done that are close to us, mm -hmm. it's not going to be very good if we try and do work reaching way over there. So we're going to move this far piece to be close to us again. And we'll still have our other two pieces that make our jig work so that everything is the same way. We'll just slide these over. Put our piece back on top. And we tap everything up to our jig. Yeah. Now everything is good to go again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's your glue. Pop the top three already. Nice little squiggly squiggles. That's plenty, so we can just, we don't even need to do those dots anymore. I like them to make it look nice. Well, that's going to be on the inside where we can't see it, so it's all right. Very good. There you go. Now we set the wood right on top. We tap to our jig so everything is lined up. Nice and tight. We'll start our screws. You know what I see sometimes? Little itty bitty metal shavings coming off of the metal. That's the plating on the screw that keeps it from corroding. Corroding. Which is like rust. Oh. So it keeps it from rusting? It's not the actual metal metal? Well, I'm not, it is metal. I'm not certain exactly what it is. I think it's cadmium, but I'm not certain. I'd have to look that one up. All right. You are all set. Now that we are done with our legs, we're going to set them off to the side because we're not ready for them yet. We have to build the top. Okay. 
we'll set the legs off to the side out of our way. You can set our scrap pieces of wood jig off to the side so they're not going to be in the way. The next pieces we're going to use are the long ones that make the top of our piece. Ooh. So, so the long ones. The long ones. So that means we need to get our other piece of scrap wood out. We're done with that. We'll move our screws to the bottom out of our workspace. Same with our glue. So we can have a clean workspace. Here is, go put this with the other scrap blocks. Okay. Those are our two big work pieces. And the next thing we need is our measuring tape. It's already on our workspace. Okay? Right here. So, let's actually go get a duster. Okay. So what we're going to do is these two pieces are the starting of the frame. They're going to be like this. We're going to have smaller pieces in between in the middle to keep the steady, keep it steady. So we can put this top on there when we're ready. Okay. Right, so before, Dad? Yep, that's exactly correct. Before we do that, though, we've got to clean up all of the little wood shavings off the top of our space. You're so right. Here's the brush. Go ahead and brush all that okay. off. Get out of here, wood shavings. So once you have made your workbench and you have and you start to get and you cut wood for something else and you get a lot of wood shavings that you can't blow off, the brush is getting a brush or a duster for your table is the smartest idea. But you can use other things. The other thing that you sometimes have is after you do a cut edge, you have some spoons on the edge. So that's what yeah. we use this little rasp for. It's called a wood a wood file, like a nail file, but it's set, except this one is for the wood. You can use it to shape the wood or use it to get off the little rough edges of the wood that you get after you cut the wood. So now that we did that, I'm going to put this off to the side and we're going to have to sweep that back up. Okay. Sweep, sweep, and sweep. Done and done. Okay, now we're going to look at our plan to make sure that we have what we need. So now we have the two long ones that say 60 on them. So we're going to set those to the side. And now we need one, two, three, four, five of the 21. So grab five okay. of those. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so set those on the other side of these real quick. get to there in just a second. Okay. So now we have to make sure that we have even spacing on all of these. So we're going to get our measuring tape and we are going to mark on the wood our distance. Okay? Okay. So here's all 60 inches. Here's my pencil. Inches. What's half of 60. Um, hmm. 30. We'll put the same mark on both pieces of wood. Okay. So we're going to further divide it into quarters. So what's a quarter of 60 or half of 30? Half of 30 is 15. Okay, and what's three quarters of 60, or half the distance between 30 and 60? Hmm. A 
That's over here. It'll be 45 right there in the middle. 45. Okay, 45. so that's where we're going to put our blocks of wood at. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we should probably clean up the sharp edges on there. Yeah, so, we'll so we don't our get splinters. Ooh, I hate splinters. I'll put these to the back. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you work with the file on the end of these blocks of wood. All right. So now my dad and I have started the screws for on top of the long pieces of the frame, which hold in these pieces. In the middle, the middle between the middle and the ends. Also known as the quarters. Also known as the quarters and the very ends. We're gonna start on the corner with where the factory square is at. That's over here. So we're gonna put this one out of the way a little bit and we're gonna start on this side on the corner. Okay. So, one of the tools we will use multiple times throughout the construction that you may or may not see is a carpenter square. And the carpenter square is just a good way to get things lined up at a square angle uh, so that that way your build comes out true and you don't have uh, issues later when you're trying to build an airplane that's square and true. So, this this tool helps you keep it lined up and even, pretty it, much? It does. Okay. Not, not yet. Okay. okay. When you're screwing in the screws for your workbench, you want someone to help you because you they will be holding one end while you put the screws in the other end. That way, it keeps it pretty much, well, it keeps it even and not wiggly jiggly. Okay. So, this, notice, came out a little bit pulled. So, what we do is go get some clamps. And then we'll pull. Clampy, clampy, clamps. Clamps are these tools. Those tools aren't big enough to do it. You push this and pull downward. Oh, I'm holding it upside down. Okay, you hold this to pull it up. This is the bottom. You put it underneath where you want to clamp something. Now when you want to tighten it, well, if it's, you have to determine the size. So once you have your size and you need to squish it, squeeze this trigger and then it tightens on your object. That is how this type of clamp works. Well, there are more clamps than just this clamp. This clamp is actually too small to fit all the way up here. All the way underneath here. So we're going to use a bigger clamp. This is a much bigger clamp. Of course, I'm holding it upside down. It sort of works the same way. This tightens it. To hold it in place. Sort of like a screwdriver when you're screwing in a nail. Dad, how do you loosen this? You unscrew it the other way, or you can grab this trigger right here, and then it releases it and slides. Ah. So what I need to do is pull this out and clamp it where it belongs so that, that way everything is built square. And that's why the factory edge is important. 
tightening. Clamp it down, clamp it down, clamp it down. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Saying tighten makes me think of Ariel's father. All right, there so we go. that's okay. all set. Now, we can come and drill this one in. And this is where it gets important to use the carpenter square. So we set this on the inside edge and make sure that that stays straight. Because remember, this is the shop square on this side. And it might not be perfect, but a carpenter square will keep us very good. So, this is the factory edge. So that's the important one. So pull this edge back. This one goes square. And that's now tight. So now that that's good, I'm going to screw this in I'll on the end. other end. Okay, so now we're going to make our box. And our box is the other end of the pieces. So this, notice, will be tight. Does it fit? Not very well, because this is still sloppy over here. But now that that is lined up, we can make sure that that stays square. We want to use a piece of our scrap wood as a jig. We can use a piece of our scrap wood as a jig and just line up those edges until it's square. Mm -hmm. But we always want to do the clamped factory side first. So that's squared up. All right, Catherine, you get to do the last of the box. There you go. Nice straight push. Nice and slow. Okay, go to the top screw. Nice and slow. Now we're done with our scrap wood. We're going to leave our clamps in place to keep everything built square and true. We'll double check that our carpenter square stayed square. And look at that. It's square on the ends, so we won. Yay! We can now take this out so it's not in the way as we do our assembly. A square, so I'm going to tighten this one down to pull it back into square. Back in square. Very good. Okay, next one. Time for glue. Would you like me to grab your paper towel to clean that off? No, thanks. Appreciate the offer. I'm going to clean that off when we're completely done with that. Yep.
the other side. first. of that.
was us putting on the bottom shelf of the workbench. The bottom shelf is there so you can put the things you need underneath your table and not have it all on top of the table when you need to put some other things on there to build it. Now we, now I have to put polyurethane on the top of my, on top of the top for my workbench, right here. so it doesn't move and then it's screwed in on all awkward. So the way these clamps work is you put them in the position you want them in. This loosens it, this little trigger right here. You can loosen it to whatever size you need it at. And this handle is to tighten it. <clears throat> the other thing we need to do is ensure that we have our factory square square. So we're going to attach that clamp right here. But remember when we started our build, 
right here on this corner, we marked it factory square. We put our red marks for putting the red marks together and the blue marks for putting the blue marks together. So we want to make sure that this stays exactly lined up so that our table is true and square and we've got a work surface that we can put the tables end to end or side to side mm -hmm. on the work surface. So we double check that. The next thing we're going to do is countersink our holes first. So we want to get a drill bit that's nice and big and it's the same size as our drywall screw. Okay, I need to get... What does countersink mean? You need to explain that. What okay. does countersink mean? All right, that's a great question. Countersink is making a small V in the surface of the wood so that the head of the screw right here is flush with the top. Because if we just screwed it in and we had a bump up on top, that's not going to be good for a work surface, is it? Mm -hmm. So we want to make a pocket for those screws to just barely sink into so they are flush. That's what a ah. counter sink does. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, so it means it makes a place for the screw to live? That's exactly what it does. Okay. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to do the counter sinks in the key spots, and then you're going to go through and you're going to attach with the drywall screws to the top. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. Oop. Your eyes. Eyes. Get your eyes. Where are my eyes? Oh, there. When I'm doing this countersink, all I want to do is make a hole just big enough for that screw head, screw head to sit in. Mm. Okay, so we'll come just next to our row here. We'll go to the inside of it. Just deep enough for the screw head. We'll stay just to the right side of this again. Inside. And the end. All right. Now I'll take the screw bit out. And we'll put the driver in for you. Nope, you don't want the clamp. Start here on the end. Put it right in the center. Okay, we're gonna keep it nice and straight. There you go, go slow. Whoop, slow. Nice and straight. Keep going. Keep going. One more little screw. There you go. Now look, that's flush. Mm -hmm. That's what your countersink allows for. Ah. Pretty cool, huh? Mm hmm. All right, next. Next on the list. Perfect. See how it's flush? Mm hmm. We'll do that. We'll come back to this one after we move the clamp. Yeah. One on this side. What are those squeaks? The squeaks are the wood getting squeezed tight together, and the screw uh, working against the wood and the friction. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, last one on this side. We don't want to spin them like that because that will cause the screw to get stripped and won't be able to take it out. Alright, now we're going to change the bit back out and we'll countersink all of our other spots. Inside. That one is a little bit deep. It's okay. Another important thing we want to do is work from one end to the other so that we don't create any stress in the wood or create any bumps. So if we went and just did random patterns, the wood can get wavy. So we're going to start at that corner, we're going to go that way, and then we're going to come down the line, and this will be the last screw we do. Okay. Actually, this will be the last screw we do. We'll do this one, we'll come over here, and we'll do this one. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's get our screws. We'll set the whole box of screws up here on top so we've got easy access. Yep. I'll do this one here on the end. Not quite flush. Now it's flush. Mm -hmm. Hey, you them all up. Oh, very good. Let's turn around this way and we'll practice drilling with our other hand. So we gotta do both sides so we've got expert skills both directions. Let's hold that nice and straight. Thanks for watching.